Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. We're out of the bat on today's show. If you're a big fan of the Audi TT, some bad news as Audi is going to be retiring this car for good. The vehicle's been with us for over 20 years in several different iterations, but Audi has officially announced that this car will be going away. Now, it is going to be replaced in the next several years, but it's going to be a battery electric vehicle. That being said, if they're going to build a battery electric vehicle, little two-door sports car deal, I think I'm on board with this particular situation, even though it's kind of sad to see the TT go after being with us for so long. So we'll definitely keep you in tune more of what we hear. Sticking on the electrification front, finally we get to lay our eyes on the brand new Ferrari hybrid. This is the brand new SF90 Stradale. SF standing for Scuderia Ferrari. 90 is actually for the 90th birthday for the Scuderia. Now, this thing's an actual plug-in electric hybrid, which means this thing actually has EV range. Now, we'll get to that a little bit later, because let's get to the fun part. Power comes, at least for the rear wheels, from a 4-liter twin-turbocharged dual overhead cam 32-valve V8. Now, the most powerful V8 in Ferrari's lineup, making 769 horsepower and 590 pounds-feet of torque. It also has electric engines, three of them, two of them up front, along with a third one for a little extra oomph, which does give this thing all-wheel drive, be this being the first ever mid-engine all-wheel drive Ferrari has ever built. It also got some torque vectoring thanks to those ones per wheel, along with the booster pack, and a 7.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery setup. That adds another 217 horsepower to the mix for a grand total of 986 horsepower. Now, I'm anxiously awaiting the torque numbers that the electric engine is going to add up to the drivetrain. Hopefully, we'll hear more about that coming very soon. 8-speed dual-clutch transmission, all new, is going to be available in this particular machine. And thanks to that, the all-wheel drive system and that 9, almost 1,000 horsepower, this thing's laying down. 0 to 62 comes in at 2.5 seconds with a top speed of 211 miles an hour, which a lot of folks are saying the electric drivetrain is kind of holding that back a tad bit. Now, let's get to some of the aero stuff that this vehicle's got to offer, because you know that there's going to be some active aero pieces, especially out back there calling this system the shut-off gurney. It's basically going to lower down the rear wing to shut off airflow from underneath said spoiler, which is going to allow for maximum downforce on hard braking and for extreme maneuvers as far as track conditions concerned. This thing will make 860 pounds of downforce at 155 miles an hour. Now let's get to that EV. With the battery fully charged up, this vehicle will be able to go upwards of 15 miles on a charge. In fact, just a touch over 15 miles. At speeds of over 80 miles an hour. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. I'm assuming at 80 miles an hour, you're not going to get that much range out of it. That being said, they haven't actually left a lot on the table for this particular machine when it comes to the three-mode driving positions because it's got one that's pretty exciting. It's got the hybrid mode, which obviously is the everyday mode, the performance mode, and then the top mode is called qualifying mode. <laughs> so that's going to be where everything gets turned up to 11 to go for a really hot lap. Also, the interior has been completely redone on this particular machine. I guess I shouldn't say redone because it's an all-new vehicle. With a brand new 16-inch fully customizable instrument cluster. And supposedly got a pretty trick little heads-up display system that they haven't quite showed us yet. Even though they have hinted around about this vehicle. Now, if you want a little bit extra performance or a little bit extra high-end goodies, for the first time ever, Ferrari is putting a little hop-up kit for this machine that you can tick the box for when you're putting in your order. It's called a Set Ferrano, which comes with a ton of extra aluminum, titanium, carbon fiber parts, including full carbon fiber doors on both sides. That particular system, I'm assuming, is going to cost a pretty penny, and along comes with spool valves, dampers on all four corners as well. So this thing's going to be a little bit more of a track-focused machine. This vehicle will be available in Ferrari dealers in the summer of next year, the year 2020, with a starting price of $1.2 million. So we'll definitely keep you in tune with a lot of the holes that they left out of this machine. We'll keep you in tune with what we hear more about it. 
Last up on the list, folks over at Red Bull Advanced Technologies are showing off the brand new Halo system for the folks over at IndyCar. This was a system they were actually testing for the FIA on their Formula One machines a couple of years ago, but didn't get taken as the new Halo system for, for Formula One was actually the one that was picked, but the folks over at IndyCar picked up the piece. Now, I love this particular system. It's a lot more aesthetically pleasing, even though they have worked massively hard to make it every bit as safe as a Halo system. So I tell you what, the new IndyCars have looked pretty doggone good with the new Aero package. This new system is not going to take away any of those good looks as far as these machines. It's going to be very interesting to hear a lot more what Red Bull Advanced Technologies has up their sleeve for other racing series coming up very soon. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. Links down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time. The first dibs in the brand new show as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. See you again real soon.